Um, this one, this is my old monk, my first monk. And I re-rolled Nixar and realized I don't want to play Nixar monk. So the plan is to re-roll a human monk with the proper starting stats. I just don't want one. Everybody has an XR monk. I want a human monk. I got an XR monk. I don't want it. <laughs> I realize they're better in every way, shape, and form, but for me, that's not going to matter. When I was a wee lad, me and my friends used to be huge fans of um, martial arts movies. Kung Fu Theater. You know, you know what I mean. Kung Fu Theater. We always thought Chuck Norris was a bit of a joke because he only knew karate. Up in the mountains, behind the house, uh, behind the housing project, housing project that we lived in, um, there were these neat little craters um, surrounded by trees and whatnot. A couple of them. And uh, we'd go up there Two teams. Are being split, split. Everybody got split up into teams. One team would go up this day, then the, ne the other team would go up the next day, and we go up there and build traps for each other. <laughs> you know, to use on each other, like pit traps and you know, like falling log traps and things like that. Big bundles of uh, thorn bushes. Um, you know, when you hit the trip wire, they come crashing down on your head. That kind of thing. Yeah, local armory had all these really neat charts on how to build a. You know, like Vietnam era traps, you know, booby traps. So we spent a lot of time down there studying the uh, posters up on the walls. They had a basketball court that they allowed the kids to use. But around the little gymnasium that they had in there, um, there was all these posters on, you know, pit traps and punji sticks and stuff like that. And it was good research while we pretended to play basketball. <laughs> and the rules were you can't mess with anything that any that the other team had already done if you happen to come across it. And then on the weekends, we go up there and have these war games, the two teams. And uh, But instead of using, like, pop guns and stuff like that, we'd use, like, nunchucks and stuff. Saturdays, we'd watch our kung fu movie at noon, because it came on every day at noon. And then immediately after, once we're all hyped up from watching the movie, we'd run up to the mountains and try to murder each other. A lot of good fun. A lot of good fun. Nobody ever really seriously got hurt. One kid did get a log to the face, though, but it was an old, rotten log, and it really just squished over his face. It was kind of gross. Yeah, we left one of the kids tied up there. We hog-tied him, and then just left him up there. He comes down out of the woods 11 o'clock at night, um, sticks and leaves in his hair, complaining because one of the people that claimed to own the land up there, it, it, they didn't own it. It was all public land. Um, they just didn't like people messing around up there, but they'd uh, chase, chase us kids out with a uh, rock salt shotgun with uh, rock salt loads. He was fine. He was fine. No harm came to him. Uh, we planned on going up and getting them. We just forgot. <laughs> you know how it is when you're a kid and you get distracted. Nobody ever took it personally. Of course, you get arrested for it now. But we didn't have video games. I mean, we had the Atari 2600. So what choice did we have? We had to make our own fun. So after getting aggravated by E.T. for the 800th time, you know, we just put the uh, Atari away and went and did something fun. you got to remember the time period. 13 channels on television. HBO was a new thing. There was a um, little box that you'd set on top of your TV with a switch. You know, regular TV, HBO regular TV, HBO, and you, your TV would have to be on channel 3, and then you'd switch it over to HBO. And they said the F word. I kid you not. Right there on television. Mother and child. Um, girlfriend and the beast. Um, built a fort out in the living room. Takes up every single available square inch of floor space in the living room, except for a little path around it that you have to walk sideways to get through. Um, it's been there for two days. I don't have the heart to complain about it because they have so much fun. <laughs> it's a really nice little fort. Cardboard boxes, blankets, that kind of thing. That's why you have kids. So you can build forts in the living room without looking like an idiot.
Look at that. We have stat gear now. Plus one stamina, plus one charisma. Oh yeah, the chicks are going to dig me now. So? Doesn't mean I can't take the ladies out for a night on the town. Nothing in the rules about that. Just not allowed to touch them. And I beg to differ about the uh, monks or celibate thing. Just to ask all the little acolytes walking around that are unable to sit down. Alright. All right. I read. I know what they get up to. They're the baddest Catholic priests. I think there's uh, something there that, you know, that has to do with repressing things. And, you know, being, being a biological organism, you can only repress so much before you're pushed to do something that you ordinarily wouldn't do if you just tended to those urges occasionally. So it just seems like people that are in those very restrictive lifestyles, those very restrictive professions, you know, for lack of a better word, always tend to drift over to the dark side. You don't hear, you know, Methodists, for example. You don't, you don't hear it coming from Methodists because they're allowed to take wives and That could be, that could be, chicken or egg. I tend to believe, though, that it would be more along the lines of um, the repression thing. Uh, nobody likes to be told what to do. No, no, gynecologists are just weird. But nobody likes to be restricted, nobody likes to be confined. Um, you know, it's okay when you do it by choice, but when you're doing it based on a set of rules. And the more restricted you are, the more you want to push back. My daughter started doing this thing where um, she'll be sitting over at her desk watching her bigios. She, when she says it, it sounds like bitches. It's cute. So she'll say, can I watch my bitches? <laughs> she'll be sitting over there watching her videos, and I'll get up and go get a coffee or something. And she'll tell me to sit as I'm walking back to my desk getting ready to sit. She'll tell me to sit. And that, that knee-jerk response to just contradict, you know, to, to not be told what to do, almost makes me not want to sit down at my desk. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're going to get, you're going to get expelled. All right, um, yeah, I'll log on with them. Is it really? It's rainy and cold here. <laughs> He's not up for re-election yet. Just build a dome. Just a big old dome. Become isolationist. That would be nice. Screw the rest of the world. We got all the natural resources we need right here. Of course, we'd have to cut off Alaska, too. And Hawaii would be on their own. And Puerto Rico, but, you know, sacrifices. We got a dome. Well, yeah, the only way he can get chicks is if he um, threatens them with a life in prison. And yeah, you know, I'll bet he does because he's probably never had a normal childhood. That's probably why him and uh, oh, what's his name there, that basketball player, got along so well. Dennis Rodman. I don't feel that bad for Kim Jong-un, honestly. He made his choices. 
could have chosen to be a benevolent dictator. He chose to be a dick fuck. I'm not saying like something he has to do tomorrow, but he starts by getting rid of everybody immediately around him. All his father's old advisors. Just eliminate him. Don't even be polite about it. Just fuck, just murder him. <laughs> All right. Clear that whole circle out, and then replace it with um more agreeable people. It's a, it can't be an overnight thing. It would have to be a you'd have to build into it. Can be done though. I'm not saying it'll be an easy process. I'm not saying it'll be an easy transition. Uh, there'd be complications. You'd have to uh, take care of some things. Ta uh, I'm sure some of the old guard wouldn't mind a more benevolent dictator, uh, but those that want to maintain the status quo for whatever reason, um, you know, they just have to go. And then you use those ones that would m wouldn't mind seeing the country go in a different direction. Then you use those to get rid of the other ones because they're already ruthless and bloodthirsty. They've been killing for the old regime already, so they're used to it. This will be their penance. Okay, he's, yeah, he's waiting by the uh, druid rings for you. Good one. And thanks for all your help doing that. Appreciate it. You got any guff from your professors? Just tell them to give me a call. Set them straight. <laughs> Besides, we still have all their gold. Did you hear that uh, about the um, uh, German ambassador, dignitary, whatever, came over to check on the... Um, after World War II, they uh, had the United States hold all their gold for them, all their gold reserves. And um, a, few, uh, a few years ago, uh, they came over to check on their stash of gold because they hadn't seen it since then. It's been sitting in the uh, Federal Reserve the whole time. When they came to check on it, the guy said, uh, no, you can't see it. <laughs> what do you mean we can't see it? <clears throat> yeah, it's not available for viewing right now. Well, they they insist. Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, they insisted on it. You know, well, we want to see our gold. You know, it's our gold. Eventually, they brought out one ingot <laughs> and said, "Well, here." <laughs> uh, so there's like strong reason to believe that it doesn't even exist anymore. There's not a lot they can do. I mean, what are they going to do? I, mean, I feel I, I think it's a shitty thing that we you know that we're doing, but but it's not us, and that's the thing. It's not it's not the United States government that's doing it. It's the Federal Reserve that's doing it. It's not the U.S. Treasury that has the gold. It's the Federal Reserve that has the gold, and that's a private bank. And we don't have any control over that. That's the same bank that we're beholden to. They carry all our debt. I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> they have better bunkers than we do. <laughs> all it would take is one president with the cojones to say, no, no more. We're not doing this anymore. That's all it took to start it.